Blog Talk Radio. Hello, all y'all. This is Girl George from Girl George and the Dragons Radio Show. Today, we have an old friend of mine from the Story Plow and the Stork Club. Uh, she used to be friends with the Moore Brothers. All of them were little kids at the time, I think. And uh, <laughs> they used to sing down there. And they even sing on, on the recording that Joan made of the best of the open mic from the Story Plow. And she sang back up with me on that one, too. So we haven't seen each other in a long while. She moved down to L.A. She's from France. And her name is Ellen. I can't pronounce the last name. You pronounce it. Renault. Renault. You did. did. Yeah, Renault. Perfect. I I forgot. (laughs) So what have you been doing? Uh, What have you been Uh, doing down in L.A.? Up in L.A.? Down in L.A.? Down in in L.A. I was trying to change things around a little bit and focus more on music. Kind of try to do less teaching. And... I mean, I worked with a drummer for a year. I started some recordings. I've been playing out a little bit, too. Kind of enjoying this change of scene and climate and um, life. So yeah, that's I what used I've been to live in L.A. Then. right before I met you. I came down here from, up here from L.A. I was in L.A. for 12 yeah, years. I remember so. you talking about Al's Bar and stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, too bad Al's Bar is not there anymore. No, I don't think it is. Is the yeah. Kibitz room still there? It's hooked on to uh, Cantor's. Yeah. Have you been there? No, it's still there. They have like a jam session on Tuesday nights. Uh, I've been. I, I, I went to, once. I used to play there on on Friday nights. There was a guy that had oh, a yeah? blues thing there, and then he let me play on his break. So that was oh, kind of cool. cool. Yeah. And Central's yeah. not there anymore. Central's now the Viper Room. But the I've great. Been there. Yeah, they had a great jam there. They had, you know, Al Cooper was there and the Chambers Brothers and and everybody played at that jam. Even Carol King came in one night, Stray Cat. Oh, nice. Well, it, it cool. ended up being bought by Johnny Depp and them, and they changed it into the Viper Room, and now it's for rich people. But it used to be a cool yeah. jam. It cost you a dollar to get in. And most people nice. didn't get on. Unless you were famous and knew the guy that ran it, you didn't go on. But he said I was funny, so he always put me on first and let me do my dirty yeah. songs. So I wrote was most of the dirty uh... songs right there. Oh, yeah. Cool. Was <laughs> it on the Trip? Yeah, it's the Viper Room. Yeah, yeah I haven't gone through the You know Viper the Viper Room? room? You don't know the Viper Room. I, I kind of know where it is, but I've, I haven't gone. That's where that. the kid Rivers OD'd at. Oh, yeah, okay. It's across the street from the Whiskey Go-Go. Okay. Yeah, I still it's need to where get that That, that movie story. Valley Girls had, had a scene shot there with Plimsoll. Oh, yeah? In it. I haven't seen that movie. Yeah. You know Peter Case? Nope. Oh, he's cool. You'd like him. He's a folk singer. Is he a musician? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a folk singer and yeah. Band sort of stuff. Same kind of stuff you guys do. Oh, uh, cool. Peter K. So, so did you uh, tour uh, France? I, I seen some things about France. Yeah, I saw. I did a few dates uh, a couple of years ago. I had like a couple of dates in Paris. One in Brittany, so it's cool because my parents came to the show. One in Bordeaux, a couple in, the, in Spain, and that was it. Really, I just kind of booked it myself, but it wasn't big shows or anything. But it was fun. To try to get the music out so, there a so, little bit. So where are you from originally? Where exactly are I'm you from? From Brittany. Brittany, that's Brittany. the northwest. Yeah, the northwest that's of France. France. Mm-hmm. It's called Brittany. The Celtic Park. I would think. I thought the French hated the Britons. Why would they call it Brittany? <laughs> well, because Brittany is also Celtic, like Ireland and Scotland. So they have uh, their own language, and so time. But you know, it used to be that Brit- uh, England had a Normandy was the same country because there's a Norman king that went over and invaded England, basically. Um, <laughs> and Brittany, but Brittany was independent at the time, but they had like neighborly rapport with England, I guess. So it was called Bretagne, Brittany. And then Great Britain is Grand Bretagne, which means Big Britain. You know. 
Okay, so what did your father do? What kind of work did your father do? My dad was an engineer. He was very square, very eight, nine to five, very, very responsible guy. <laughs> so he well, what, what did he design stuff? What, what was an engineer? He was like a civil engineer. So he worked on roads. What? And bridge engineer. So he worked on roads and bridges and construction and stuff. Like designing them, oh. supervising oh. the construction and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Like he worked for mostly, he worked for the public sector for a long time and then he worked at the harbor in one of the towns where we lived in at some point. And then his last job was with the university, actually the one I went to school at in Rennes, where he was kind of overseeing the building construction and maintenance, maintenance and stuff like that. So did your, your mother work too? No. My, mo- my mother stopped working when she had kids, you know. she was. Uh, how, many, pretty... how many kids are there? Three kids. I'm Three the middle kids. child. Boys? Trouble. Boys? Girls? Uh, what? One, no, two girls and one boy. My Yeah, my, I have an older sister and a younger brother. And, yeah, they, my mom, my so, mom, she didn't work, but she did a lot of volunteer work and tried to keep herself busy. I think she should have worked. She's one of these women, you know, that she stopped working because she thought that was the thing to do. But I think really in her soul and heart, she should have been, like she wanted to be more active in society and stuff. What kind of work she did, did she do she before could. the kids came along? What kind of work did she do before the kids came along? She was... Working with, uh, my, my mom is from, a, both my parents had their farmers, and so my mom, she she was teaching like, uh, how you, what do you call that, you know, for a while she was teaching you know, little, young girls how to saw and cook and all that stuff, domestic arts, I guess they're called. Home economics then, uh, is what they call it here. Home economics, yeah. Yeah. And then. So she was a teacher, that, huh? Oh. She was a teacher a little bit, and then after that, she also worked with uh, farmers' wives in the country, and she was helping them kind of organize the kitchen so it would be more efficient and, like, landscape their yard and stuff. I don't know exactly, something like that. Kind of like a counseling kind of thing. Cool. My daughter, Wendy, remember her? She's going to be a teacher. Yeah, uh, I know. In December, in December, she's finally getting around to doing her work in the classroom so that she can actually become a uh, probably a fifth-grade teacher. Oh, cool. And she liked it. She went for the college okay. years ago, back in 95, but she never did the yeah. classroom stuff to get their credentials, but she's finally doing that. And oh, I got so two grandkids now. A oh, boy that's I seven know, and a half. I know, I a girl that's four and a half, so I'm a grandma. Wow. Do you see them a lot? I live with them. I live downstairs. Oh, they live awesome. upstairs. We cool. live, you know, at a big house that we rent. We rent, you know, and they yeah. live upstairs. Her and her husband and the oh. two kids upstairs, I'm downstairs. So when they need a babysitter, I'm right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I see them that's all convenient. the time. Yeah, And you get to convenient. enjoy them. Yeah. Just the girl is great. Open, open the she girl likes? sings and dances. The girl sings and dances. Oh, she's sweet. four and a half. She's a little redhead. She's got real long hair down to her butt. That's red. Nice. <laughs> and she loves to sing and dance. She's real sweet. She's a Virgo. Uh, yeah, she's real nice. The boy's yep. a Leo. <laughs> uh-huh. he, what are you? He rules the world. I'm a Scorpio. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember it now. What are you? Capricorn. Capricorn, that's good. First thing yeah, I get I, this, I'm Moon and Libra. And I have Mars and Scorpio, though. My daughter is a Taurus, so I, I like Earth signs. You're nice and mellow. Yeah. I'm kind of, you know, Scorpio is kind of raw, raw nerves, so I need the Earth to mellow me out a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you end up coming to the mm-hmm. United States? Uh, because I had some friends, I met these guys. I had a band in San Francisco, and um, when I was in France, when I was in college, and I don't know, I was like, I had, when I was in France, I was writing a little songs, I was studying, you know, literature, music, and then I didn't really know I had to break up. I 
you know, I know what to do with my life, basically. So I was like, okay, I need to travel somewhere. And I was like, okay, I know people in San Francisco. Let's go there. <laughs> and I, I just decided to go on vacation. I was going to have to wear all the beatniks and stuff. So I took a bus from New York to San Francisco so I could see everything. And once I, I really loved the city of San Francisco. I also went to Mexico to visit a cousin of mine that lived there at the time. So it was kind of a really eye-opening, life-changing trip. And I decided not to go home while I was in Mexico. My parents <laughs> freaked out. And um, I, I, I thought about staying in Mexico, but then I wasn't sure how I was going to make a living there. So I, I decided to go back to San Francisco, which I loved anyway, and look for jobs. And I started to work as an au pair. Uh, little by little, I... You know, I found a job for like a year, two years, and then I got a job as a teacher later. So in a fine school. Teaching so, music? Yeah, that was the, yeah, I was teaching music. When you met me, that's what I was doing. I was teaching preschool music in the French school. Yeah. And doing some, yeah, after school. So, that's what brought so me. when did you start playing uh, guitar and yeah. singing and stuff? How old were you? When I was in college, a little bit before moving to the States, because I was playing drums for my, well, my first instrument was the violin, because I was classically trained, so I played violin, and then I went to school for music. I thought I was going to become a violinist or something, and then on college, I started to play drums with my boyfriend's band, because I needed a drummer, and there was a drum set where they were rehearsed, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can keep a beat, I think. <laughs> And I thought so myself it was drums? fun. Yeah, I played drums for a year for them. I even bought a drum set. And then oh. I was like, ah, oh, that sounds, that looks kind of fun to be singing <laughs> and writing songs. <laughs> so I borrowed his guitar and I taught myself some chords so I could write songs and sing. Right? That was the idea. So a little bit, you know, I started to record on the four tracks. We had four tracks for the night. And do my own thing. And later, I stopped going to stop the drums because the band broke up, because we broke up, and then I you know, tripped and chewed and food, and food, and then I came to California. Yeah, I mean, so it was, how did you, know, you meet was, the Moore Brothers? Yeah. How did you meet the Moore at Brothers? At the store club. At the store club. Someone at the took store me to the club show. at my open mic, huh? <laughs> not, not the open mic. It was another night where they were playing a regular set, and someone took me there, yeah. someone... I just met, and I was like, oh, I really liked it. I was like, there was kind of, there were, I felt really a kinship to their kind of music they were doing, you know, it's like the, that kind of close harmony vocals, and it's all the stuff I love, so it's kind of like that, and the songwriting. Yeah, they were like the hippies. So. All you all you kids were like, like the hippies were in the 60s. There's a whole bunch of you that were all, you know, Kendra's played yeah. together and hung out together. That was fun. Definitely hippies, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I went to your open mic, because they were going there. And then a few yeah. couple months after I met them, they moved down to California, California. But I stayed up there, so I kept going to your open mic. Um, and Davenport, so too. Fun. Davenport's down there now, isn't he? Bart Davenport? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see him sometimes. Um, Isn't it too hot down there? Isn't it hot down there? It's true. (laughs) Sometimes when it gets pretty hot, I'm like, oh, that San Francisco gets cold, you know? Oakland is better. I'd rather be cold. Yeah. It's okay, I'm on it. Here we get one or two hot days, and then the fog comes in and cools us off. Today's one of those hot days. Ew. Yeah. So yeah, within a couple warmer. hours, it'll be 5,000 degrees in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see, but... He so have uh, you got any albums out? Do you have any albums that you do? Well, yeah, I released an album in 2011 called The Dear Convention. I did a uh-huh. fundraiser online to finance it because I wanted to release it in vinyl. I released it myself. Um, so that was fun. Really... Some of light, very light arrangements on the acoustic side. And then in 2012, I had an EP that came out that has been more produced on a very small San Francisco label, Kitten Charmer. 
it was just a one-off thing. I won for the four songs. And, yeah, that's my solo output. I did release a, an album with a band in 2003 when I had my band called Dean. I don't know if you remember that. We did you an album band? back then. I had a band, a band? In, in Oakland. A band, like a, a group of musicians. Oh, no, I thought you mean it got banned band. on the radio. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Explicit lyrics? No, no. <laughs> Uh, you don't no, think I the type to be banned. I would be banned. I know. <laughs> so you'd be a band. You're the type. <laughs> yeah, I'm the type. <laughs> I get banned for yeah. talking dirty. No, no, I had, a, I had a band. So we had a release in 2003 called Beam. It was a self-titled album. But uh, I kind of quickly went on the solo route. So yeah, and I'm working on a new. I'm working on more songs right now. Um, I have four that I'm trying to finish. Five that I'm in the back burner, kind of thing. See if I can find someone to release them. You know, so maybe a label or something. I'm not sure how it's gonna work this Where time. Where do you play at down there? Where do you play at down there? Um, you know, uh, I played at Tex. It's like a French restaurant. Ironically, <laughs> but it's because just because we had a friend, a friend of friends of mine, um, who was booking like a Thursday night acoustic thing every Thursday, so I played a few of those. Um, I played at the Bootleg Theater, but it was more like a big, it's a bigger place, and the booking was very last minute, so I didn't really, I wasn't able to bring a lot of people, so because I'm new in, in town. Um, why have I played otherwise? I played a few like private event time. I'm gonna play at the dressing room in August. I've seen Los Gilles. It's going to be a very nice room. I haven't been there yet. Well, I used um, to live up by uh, Los Feliz. Up by yeah. Silver it's Lake in Los Feliz up there. Oh nice. Yeah, it's the On Vermont. It's on, I used to live up in Vermont. Vermont. Yeah, they have Vermont. some clubs up there up above Vermont and up above Sunset there. Yeah. They have some yeah. cool clubs. Yeah. Have you met yeah, S. A. Oh. Griffin? Who? Have you met S. A. Griffin? He's a poet down in LA. No. He has events all the time. Well you should look him up. He always has events. And he has music included in his little events, like the open-ended it and stuff. So what look him up down there. He's, he's yeah. really cool. Tell me you're a friend of mine. Right. <laughs> What's his name again? S.A. Griffin. Oh, Griffin. Griffin. I look Griffin. him up. He's a poet. He's a poet, and he has oh, poet cool. events called the oh, open-ended it. Okay. Because he has some really bizarre, bizarre friends. You'd love them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'd like what I do. I don't know. They don't know oh, he'd love what you do. Yeah. If I like you, he'd like you. He likes, he likes things that are odd. <laughs> I, I'm kind of odd, <laughs> I think. I think all my friends yeah. are kind of odd and unique in their own little way. Right? Yeah, that's true. Well, none of them are the same, of... but they're all, all unique in their own special little way. Yeah. I'm playing down at the Missouri Lounge now on, on San Pablo. Paul Pot has an open mic there on That's Wednesday. Right, yeah. So if you're ever up what? here and want to just come and jam on a Wednesday, you know, you can know, always just walk in and play. Yeah, And sure. it's kind of a cool place. It's a block from where yeah. the old Fantasy Records used to be. You know where the oh, Fantasy so Records next- were, were? Credence Clearwater Revival. They yeah. they they recorded there, and it's a block from the new Treyas. Treyas, you know, in San Francisco, built a new Treyas in Berkeley, which is a block from the Missouri Lounge. Is it so that's all, kind, yeah, it's yeah. kind of the hip neighborhood now, you know. Yeah, a lot yeah, of downtown? warehouses that have artists that live in them around. Yeah, there. yeah, that's Oakland's kind pretty of my neighborhood. Yep, yeah. right? Huh? Is it near what? downtown Oakland? Near downtown Oakland? No, this is Berkeley. 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 Oh, Berkeley, yeah. Oh, okay. And San Pablo. Okay, down there. San Pablo, oh, about three near blocks what? from Ashby. Towards oh, okay. Berkeley oh, from my... Ashby. I used to work on there. Uh-huh. 
when I worked at the French school, it's right there at Ashby and near like St. Pablo and a couple of blocks. Yeah, this is about three or four blocks towards Berkeley from Ashby. So, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. right in that neighborhood where they got that, you know. Oh, I know. I know that bar. I remember whole that earth. bar. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know what's near. Good vibrations. You know, that vibrator store is right there. Oh, they have one there now? They didn't have you it don't when know. I was the, the famous one is right there. Yeah, and, yeah. and that place used to be a famous club called the... Uh, uh, the Long Branch. Before that, it was a cabal. The first, the okay. first folk club in, in, in Berkeley was where that vibrator store is now, and that's all from that block too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. They're probably making more money selling vibrators than they did selling selling booze to the musicians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. Deck sales. Oh, yeah. But it's not it's it's yeah. aimed at women, not men. It's 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 a real clean. That's cool, yeah. They clean. have one in the mission too. Yeah. <laughs> I know the one that I'm there in the mission. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh are you planning yeah, on staying yeah. down there? Are you gonna come back up here or what's happening? I don't know. I think I'll, I'll stay at least for a year down here and see what happens. I'm not really to going back up there because the rents are so high right now that it's like kind oh, of yeah, insane. Oh, the rent's terrible. We pay yeah. $1,700 a month, which is ridiculous. That's not too bad, actually. <laughs> yeah. For the number of people you have, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like, I like it down here. I don't know where I'd go if I, if I decide not to stay. Maybe not... Maybe some people, I don't know. We'll see. Well, the Moore brothers aren't here anymore. They moved up to Nevada City. Yeah, I know. So I went they to them ran off. Time. They still play yeah. a lot. They play, play over in Europe and stuff. They come down they here did, occasionally. Yeah, when they played with Ben on here, like two years ago. Yep. So do you see Bart down there much? Bart I see Davenport. him, yeah. I, yeah, I see him. Uh, I went to his, he was doing like a video shoot where he needed people at a party, so I went to that. But I see him like when there's shows sometimes and events. He also sang on a, one of the tracks I'm recording. It's a song that it, it's kind of about women and their place in the world. And it's kind of like the idea is if you treat women better, the world will be a better place. And I wanted to have this chorus of men singing alongside with me with the, on the chorus. So he's the, one of the guys who came in, in the studio and did backup vocals for that. That was fun. He also did some cool. extra guitar on another song, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice yeah he's got a great here. voice. He has a great voice. He's an amazing musician. And, uh, it was yeah, fun he, when we did that recording with Joan, where you guys all came in and sang back up on Everybody's Crazy But Me, screaming and yelling and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Oh my God, we, sang, we sang that song so many times. Everybody's done that song five million times. And but Johnny now, but now the one I do most is the one I do most is about the one about Al's Bar. I, I do that, that at the Missouri Lounge. Well, you probably never heard it, but it's one I wrote about Alice Barr. And that's one I do more than Everybody's Crazy But Me Now. Now Everybody's Crazy is on, on the radio show, and uh, yeah, I do the one about Alice Barr at the club all the time. What's that song? Were you playing it back then, or is it a new one? Yeah, I didn't play it much. I, I rearranged it and added more to it. So it's it's, yeah. it's it's a good end song. It's real fast and loud and stuff, so... You used to do that. If you look up on the web, you can find it on my 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 YouTube site. I've got okay, it yeah, I have to look it up. And yeah. tape and stuff. Yeah. You used to always cover uh, the times are changing too. I what? That. The times, times are, are changing? changing. No, I don't do yeah. that anymore. You don't do that. Well, I haven't played guitar in ten years because my hands don't work. No, but you used work. to, right? It. Yeah, I used to play guitar. So now Paul Pot has to back me up. So I've got to learn how to play slide because I can't I can't make the fingering on a guitar anymore because my hands don't <laughs> do it. 
<laughs> so I got to learn how to play slides so I can start doing my own thing again without yeah. having to depend on somebody else. I've still got the guitar. Yeah. I just don't know how to tune it and open tuning. I don't know how to use the slides. So I got yeah. to actually learn how to do it all over again. So oh. that's a pain. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I've been doing too is I've been um, learning so many more Leonard Cohen songs. You remember how I was always doing Suzanne? You always uh-huh. made me do Suzanne. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, I do that of, once in a while at the yeah. club. Um, I learned a lot more of his songs than I love doing covers. I think I'm going to try to do a tribute album or something of his songs. Some of the ones I do. Oh, he's got some beautiful songs. Yeah, he's such a good... I'm reading one, a biography of him right now that's super interesting. Uh-huh. And very well written. So. Well, yeah, there's a girl my, down at the club that, that does Suzanne, so when Paul's not there, I have her play that and I sing that. Nice. So I sort of can sing it if I can remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah, good at doing soft, song. sweet songs. I'm more better at yelling and screaming. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. What else? So, do you have anything to yeah. plug? Do you have any gigs coming up or, or anything? I have that one gig, uh, August 31st at the Dresden Room. Um, it's, uh, yeah, at the end of the summer. That will be fun. Yeah. And I am working. I have a video coming out next month, but I'm not sure exactly when. I have a. I've been working with this uh, filmmaker up in the Bay Area. His name is Zach Sanju. He did two videos uh. for me. One from the album, one from the EP, and he's just finishing a third one right now. It's called Spring Wind. It's the first track on the last EP I did. So that's going to be ready sometime in July. I think I'm not sure exactly when. And that's kind of the news right now. I'm still working on a new recording, so there'll be updates on that too. Um, soon. People can check out my website if they want more news on my Facebook. Um, um, that's it for now. <laughs> I need to book more shows. So, <laughs> so your name is spelled H. E L E N E with a silent H, right? Yeah, exactly. And then the last name is R E N A. And the last name is R E N A U T, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so they can find you on Facebook and find out all the things yeah. you're doing. I'd like to thank you for okay. calling. This is the Girl George and the Dragons Radio Show. And see you later, alligator. Mm-hmm.